Burgundians. The Burgundians were a large East Germanic, possibly Vandal, tribe or group of tribes that lived in the area of what is now Poland in the time of the Roman Empire. In the, as the empire came under pressure from many such barbarian peoples, a powerful group of Burgundians and other Vandalic tribes moved westwards towards the Roman frontiers along the Rhine Valley, making them neighbors of the Franks who formed their kingdoms to the north, and the Swibi Kalmani who were settling to their south, also near the Rhine. They established themselves in Worms, but with Roman cooperation their descendants eventually established the kingdom of the Burgundians much further south, and within the empire, in the western Alps region where modern Switzerland, France and Italy meet. This later became a component of the Frankish Empire. The name of this kingdom survives in the regional appellation, Burgundy, which is a region in modern France, representing only a part of that kingdom. Another part of the Burgundians stayed in their previous homeland in the Oder Vistula Basin and formed a contingent in Attila's Hunnic army by 451. Before clear documentary evidence begins, the Burgundians may have originally emigrated from mainland Scandinavia to the Baltic island of Bornholm, and from there to the Vistula Basin, in the middle of what is now Poland. The ethnonym Burgundians is commonly used in English to refer to the Burgundy, Burgundione, Burgundiones or Burgens who settled in Satia Savoy, in the Western Alps, during the 5th century. The original kingdom of the Burgundians barely intersected the modern Bourgogne and more closely matched the boundaries of the Arpitan or Romand, Franco-Provençal, language area, centered on the rhone alps rhone alp region of France, Romandie in West Switzerland and Val d'Oda, Val d'Aosta, in Northwest Italy. In modern usage, however, Burgundians can sometimes refer to later inhabitants of the geographical Bourgogne or Bourgogne, Burgundy, named after the Old Kingdom, but not corresponding to the original boundaries of it. Between the 6th and 20th centuries, the boundaries and political connections of Burgundy have changed frequently. In modern times the only area still referred to as Burgundy is in France, which derives its name from the Duchy of Burgundy. But in the context of the Middle Ages the term Burgundian, or similar spellings, can refer even to the powerful political entity the dukes controlled which included not only Burgundy itself but had actually expanded to have a strong association with areas now in modern Belgium and southern Netherlands. The parts of the old kingdom not within the French-controlled duchy tended to come under different names, except for the county of Burgundy. The Burgundians had a tradition of Scandinavian origin which finds support in place name evidence and archaeological evidence, Styrna, and many consider their tradition to be correct, for example Musset p. 62. The Burgundians are believed to have then emigrated to the Baltic island of Bornholm, the island of the Burgundians in Old Norse. However, by about 250 AD, the population of Bornholm had largely disappeared from the island. Most cemeteries ceased to be used, and those that were still used had few burials, Styrna, in Nerman 1925-176. In Thorstein saga Viking Sonar, the saga of Thorstein, Viking son, a man, or group, named the Sadie settled on a home, island, called Burgundermer in Old Norse, i.e. Bornholm. Alfred the Great's translation of Verogius uses the name Burgendaland to refer to a territory next to the land of Sweans, Swedes. The poet and early mythologist Victor Rydberg, 1828-1895, Our Father's God Saga, asserted from an early medieval source, Vita Sigismundi, that they themselves retained oral traditions about their Scandinavian origin. Early Roman sources, such as Tacitus and Pliny the Elder, knew little concerning the Germanic peoples east of the Elbe River, or on the Baltic Sea. Pliny, 428, however, mentions them among the Vandalic or Eastern Germanic Germani peoples, including also the Goths. Claudius Ptolemy lists them as living between the Suvius, probably the Oder, and Vistula rivers, north of the Lugii, and south of the coast dwelling tribes. Around the mid 2nd century AD, there was a significant migration by Germanic tribes of Scandinavian origin, Ruhii, Goths, Jebidae, Vandals, Burgundians, and others, towards the southeast, creating turmoil along the entire Roman frontier. These migrations culminated in the Marcomannic Wars, which resulted in widespread destruction and the first invasion of Italy in the Roman Empire period. Jordanes reports that during the 3rd century, the Burgundians living in the Vistula Basin were almost annihilated by Festida king of the Jepids, whose kingdom was at the mouth of the Vistula. In the late 3rd century, the Burgundians appear on the east bank of the Rhine, confronting Roman Gaul. Zosimus, 1.68, reports them being defeated by the Emperor Probus in 278 in Gaul. At this time, 
they were led by a Vandal king. A few years later, Claudius Mamertinus mentions them along with the Alamanni, a Swabic people. These two peoples had moved into the Agri Decumates on the eastern side of the Rhine, an area today referred to still as Swabia, at times attacking Roman Gaul together and sometimes fighting each other. He also mentions that the Goths had previously defeated the Burgundians. Aminus Marcellinus, on the other hand, claimed that the Burgundians were descended from Romans. The Roman sources do not speak of any specific migration from Poland by the Burgundians, although other Vandalic peoples are more clearly mentioned as having moved west in this period, and so there have historically been some doubts about the link between the eastern and western Burgundians. In 369-370, the Emperor Valentinian I enlisted the aid of the Burgundians in his war against the Alemanni. Approximately four decades later, the Burgundians appear again. Following Stilicho's withdrawal of troops to fight Alaric I the Visigoth in AD 406-408, a large group of peoples from Central Europe north of the Danube, came west and crossed the Rhine, entering the empire, near the lands of the Burgundians who had moved much earlier. The dominant groups were Alans, Vandals, Hastingi and Silingi, and Danubian Suevi, probably descended from Marcomanni on Gwadi. The majority of these Danubian peoples moved through Gaul and eventually established themselves in kingdoms in Roman Hispania. One group of Alans was settled in northern Gaul by the Romans. Some Burgundians also migrated westwards and settled as Thoderati in the Roman province of Germania Secunda along the Middle Rhine. Other Burgundians, however, remained outside the empire and apparently formed a contingent in Attila's Hunnic army by 451. In 411, the Burgundian king Gundahar, or Gundigar, set up a puppet emperor, Jovinus, in cooperation with Gore, king of the Alans. With the authority of the Gallic emperor that he controlled, Gundahar settled on the left, Roman, bank of the Rhine, between the river Lauter and the Naa, seizing Worms, Speyer, and Strasbourg. Apparently as part of a truce, the emperor Honorius later officially granted them the land, with its capital at Thield Celtic Roman settlement of Forbidomagus, present Worms. Despite their new status as Fodorati, Burgundian raids into Roman Upper Gallia Belgica became intolerable and were ruthlessly brought to an end in 436, when the Roman general Aetius called in Hun mercenaries, who overwhelmed the Rhineland Kingdom in 437. Gundahar was killed in the fighting, reportedly along with the majority of the Burgundian tribe. The destruction of Worms in the Burgundian Kingdom by the Huns became the subject of heroic legends that were afterwards incorporated in the Nibelungenlied on which Wagner based his ring cycle where King Gunther, Gundahar, and Queen Brunhild hold their court at Worms, and Siegfried comes to woo Kriemhild. In Old Norse sources the names are Gunnar, Brunhild, and Guthrun is normally rendered in English, in fact, the Etzel of the Nibelungenlied is based in Attila the Hun. For reasons not cited in the sources, the Burgundians were granted Fodorati status a second time, and in 443 were resettled by Aetius in the region of Saudia. Though the precise geography is uncertain, Sadia corresponds to the modern-day Savoy, and the Burgundians probably lived near Lake Dunham, known today as Lyon. A new king, Gundiak or Gunderic, presumed to be Gundahar's son, appears to have reigned following his father's death. The historian Pline tells us that Gunderic ruled the areas of Saône, Dauphiny, Savoy and a part of Provence. He set up Vienne as the capital of the Kingdom of Burgundy. In all, Eight Burgundian kings of the House of Gundahar ruled until the kingdom was overrun by the Franks in 534. As allies of Rome in its last decades, the Burgundians fought alongside Aetius and a confederation of Visigoths and others in the battle against Attila at the Battle of Chalon, also called the Battle of the Catalanian Fields, in 451. The alliance between Burgundians and Visigoths seems to have been strong. As Gundiac and his brother Shiel Perica accompanied Theodoric II to Spain to fight the Swaves in 455. Also in 455, an ambiguous reference in Fidoc TV Burgundio Ductu implicates an unnamed treacherous Burgundian leader in the murder of the Emperor Petronius Maximus in the chaos preceding the sack of Rome by the Vandals. The patrician Ricimer is also blamed. This event marks the first indication of the link between the Burgundians and Ricimer who was probably Gundiac's brother-in-law and Gundabad's uncle. In 456, the Burgundians, apparently confident in their growing power, negotiated a territorial expansion and power-sharing arrangement with the local Roman senators. In 457, Ricimer overthrew another emperor, Alvitus, raising Maiorian to the throne. 
this new emperor proved unhelpful to Ricimer and the Burgundians. The year after his ascension, Majorian stripped the Burgundians of the lands they had acquired two years earlier. After showing further signs of independence, he was murdered by Ricimer in 461. Ten years later, in 472, Ricimer, who was by now the son in law of the Western Emperor Anthemius, was plotting with Gundabad to kill his father in law. Gundabad beheaded the emperor, apparently personally. Ricimer then appointed Alibrius, both died, surprisingly of natural causes, within a few months. Gundabad seems then to have succeeded his uncle as patrician and kingmaker, and raised Glycerius to the throne. In 474, Burgundian influence over the empire seems to have ended. Glycerius was deposed in favor of Julius Nepus, and Gundabad returned to Burgundy, presumably at the death of his father Gundiac. At this time or shortly afterwards, the Burgundian kingdom was divided among Gundabad and his brothers, Gadagizel, Shilparik II, and Gundamarai. According to Gregory of Tours, the years following Gundabad's return to Burgundy saw a bloody consolidation of power. Gregory states that Gundabad murdered his brother Shilparik, drowning his wife and exiling their daughters, one of whom was to become the wife of Clovis the Frank, and was reputedly responsible for his conversion. This is contested by, for example, Barry, who points out problems in much of Gregory's chronology for the events. In circa 500, when Gundabad and Clovis were at war, Gundabad appears to have been betrayed by his brother Gadagizel, who joined the Franks, together Gadagizel's and Clovis' forces crushed the army of Gundabad. Gundabad was temporarily holed up in Avignon, but was able to remuster his army and sack Vienne, where Gadagizel and many of his followers were put to death. From this point, Gundabad appears to have been the sole king of Burgundy. This would imply that his brother Gundamer was already dead, though there are no specific mentions of the event in the sources. Either Gundabad and Clovis reconciled their differences, or Gundabad was forced into some sort of vassalage by Clovis' earlier victory, as the Burgundian king appears to have assisted the Franks in 507 in their victory over Alaric II the Visigoth. During the upheaval, sometime between 483 to 501, Gundabad began to set forth the Lex Gundabada, see below, issuing roughly the first half, which drew upon the Lex Visigothorum. Following his consolidation of power, between 501 and his death in 516, Gundabad issued the second half of Husla, which was more originally Burgundian. The Burgundians were extending their power over southeastern Gaul that is, northern Italy, western Switzerland, and southeastern France. In 493, Clovis, king of the Franks, married the Burgundian princess Clotilda, daughter of Chilperic, who converted him to the Catholic faith. At first allied with Clovis' Franks against the Visigoths in the early 6th century, the Burgundians were eventually conquered at Auden by the Franks in 532 of Terra's first attempt in the Battle of Viserons. The Burgundian kingdom was made part of the Merovingian kingdoms, and the Burgundians themselves were by and large absorbed as well. The 5th century Gallo Roman poet and landowner Sidonius, who at one point lived with the Burgundians, described them as a long haired people of immense physical size. The Burgundian language belonged to the East Germanic language group. It appears to have become extinct during the late 6th century. Little is known of the language. Some proper names of Burgundians are recorded and some words used in the area in modern times are thought to be derived from the ancient Burgundian language, but it is often difficult to distinguish these from Germanic words of other origin, and in any case the modern form of words is rarely suitable to infer much about the form in the old language. Somewhere in the east the Burgundians had converted to the Aryan Christianity from earlier Germanic paganism. Their Arianism proved a source of suspicion and distrust between the Burgundians and the Catholic Western Roman Empire. Divisions were evidently healed or healing circa 500, however, as Gundabad, one of the last Burgundian kings, maintained a close personal friendship with Avitus, the bishop of Vienne. Moreover, Gundabad's son and successor, Sigismund, was himself a Catholic, and there is evidence that many of the Burgundian people had converted by this time as well, including several female members of the ruling family. The Burgundians left three legal codes, among the earliest from any of the Germanic tribes. The Liber Constitutionum Sive Lex Gundabada, the Book of Constitutions or Law of Gundabad, also known as the Lex Burgundionum, or more simply the Lex Gundabada or the Liber, was issued in several parts between 483 and 516, principally by Gundabad, but also by his son, Sigismund. 
It was a record of Burgundian customary law and is typical of the many Germanic law codes from this period. In particular, the Liber borrowed from the Lex Visigothorum and influenced the later Lex Ripuaria. The Liber is one of the primary sources for contemporary Burgundian life, as well as the history of its kings. Like many of the Germanic tribes, the Burgundians' legal traditions allowed the application of separate laws for separate ethnicities. Thus, in addition to the Lex Gundabata, Gundabad also issued, or codified, a set of laws for Roman subjects of the Burgundian kingdom, the Lex Romana Burgundionum, the Roman law of the Burgundians. In addition to the above codes, Gundabad's son Sigismund later published the Prima Constitutio. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.